Hello and welcome back to the Eye on the U. Uh, after a couple of weeks off, this is the Miami Herald's Miami Hurricane Show. I'm David Wilson. And I'm joined, as always, on the other line by Susan Miller Degnan, our Hurricanes beat writer here at the Herald. Susan, what's going on? Just, uh, just kind of a a slow period before the storm, I guess. Yeah, spring ball we... should be right around the corner. We don't have an official date to start uh, yet, but. Um, I don't expect that to be in the next but couple of weeks 4th. here. Yeah. Okay. March 4th. You know how much there you go. Say. That's right. the unofficial official yeah. date. So uh, about two weeks from, what is that? Two weeks from Monday. Monday. Yeah. Or a week, a week from Monday, week actually. From two weeks. Yeah. Like a week and a half from now. Uh, exactly. so we're talking on Thursday night. Um, that'll be exciting. And importantly, Miami has filled uh, the last coaching vacancy um, ahead of it. Uh, bringing in, I want to try to get the pronunciation right, uh, Chevis Jackson, uh, former Marshall uh, cornerbacks coach, comes to Miami uh, to replace Jamile Aday as the defensive backs coach. Um, I'm not going to lie, I don't know a whole lot about him, but he's a guy who um, worked with Lance Guidry, I guess is kind of the headline um, at Marshall. Guidry, obviously, um, year one of the Guidry era was a, a pretty pretty major success for Miami, so... Um, I think he gets the benefit of the doubt to bring one of his own guys in. You wrote obviously about him after the hire happened earlier this week. Um, what are what are just kind of your initial impressions of this guy? Well, I, you know, I I know that Lance Gidry likes him. Yeah, and so that's good. Yeah, it carries a lot of weight. I think right now carries a lot of weight, and he he you know he he worked for um, Lance Gidry uh, as a cornerbacks coach in 2022 there. Mm-hmm. Um, at Marshall um and they they did well um I think uh they, well in 2022 at least they were uh six in the FBS in scoring six in passes intercepted third in yards per play and fifth in turnovers gained and uh and this season I th- this season they were uh I'm looking here they were they were ranked high, I think, in interceptions. They did very well with interceptions. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, Mario Cristobal seemed very high on him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, his quotes, you know, he said he's he's very excited. Like all all, all these yeah, yeah. come to Miami. Um, I guess wherever they go, they're excited. But, um, yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's 38. Mm-hmm. That's a good age. And um uh I think I'm looking here. Um I, I he's been at South Alabama, LSU. He was also a great cornerback. Yeah, I wanna say I was gonna say one thing I like about him um is uh he's from you know a small school coaching resume, but um right. you know, played at LSU, won a national championship at LSU. Um, played in the NFL so like he's not a stranger to like the pressure the high pressure that comes at a at a, a power Definitely. program like Miami and he was the first team I think it was first team yep. SEC first all, yeah, all conference I think yep yeah uh he in that national championship game I think he had an interception that he returned uh as many oh, I think more than 30 yards um so he's you're right he's he's used to pressure coming from a major SEC school um, and winning a national championship. Yeah, I, I mean, you never know how these guys yeah. are going to be. But if if Lance Guidry ha- had a lot of success this year, and if it's great that he worked with him and groomed him a little bit. Um, so I think that I probably, as far as we know now, it mm-hmm. looks like it's a good hire. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he can do as a recruiter, too. Obviously, like, at Marshall, it's oh, not yeah. like you get to do, you know, you're not in big recruiting battles. Um, I think I saw he was, like, the MAC recruiter of the year one year at Ball yeah. State. Yeah. Um, yeah. But also, you know, he's from uh, Mobile, I think, right? He's from Alabama. Yes. yes. Like we said, played at LSU. Um, so he's got, like um, – And, and, you know, and drafted – yeah, drafted yeah, by played the, in the, NFL. Falcons in the third yeah. round of the 2008 NFL draft. So the guy, you know. Yeah, so there's like a lot of stuff that, may, you know, again, he hasn't gotten a chance to do it, but he checks a lot of the boxes for like you you look at a resume like that and you say, oh, this guy might actually be able to re- recruit at a pretty high level 
um you know younger guy not not super he's not like early 30s or, or late 20s like some of those like super young uh coaches but you know a young young guy who played in yeah. the modern era of college football or something close to the modern era of college football um you know but like his cross paths being in the sec he's crossed paths with, with a lot of um a lot of important coaches you know just a lot of i'm sure he's got a lot of connections um that he had as a player and and obviously you know he was a grad assistant at lsu too and so he's got um you know I, i'm interested and in, and i think the fact like there's upside there and then i think the fact that lance gidry clearly um you know thinks very highly of him like you've got a pretty pretty high floor there too where i, I think you know it was, it was kind of a gripe i had the first year of the mario cristobal staff where it just felt like they were like it was like an all-star draft of coaches. They were just like cobbling guys together who hadn't for the most part hadn't worked together. Um right. sometimes you know it it's you great. don't want you don't want just like your group think of, of just all guys who have worked together forever, but um you know it, it helps to have a couple spots. And Gidry, you know, he's a DB's guy too. So um, you know, makes sense that uh the secondary coach would be be a guy that he'd kind of like want to have a, a really close relationship with. Yeah. And they're it's interesting because uh a day a day a die uh, I know I um, pronounce it different every time <laughs> yeah yeah he um he was a secondary coach yeah and and this uh, this uh, and you know Jackson is now designated the cornerbacks coach mm -hmm. so um yeah I wonder if because Gidry was a safeties coach at one point I wonder if it's, yes, he's going to be a little was, more hands on I mean I'm sure I'm sure Gidry Travis was, Jackson will do both. But um, I wonder if Gidry will be a little, little hands on in the secondary too. Oh, oh, I'm sure. I mean, mm -hmm. he and I think he did coach the uh, uh, safeties. Yeah. This past season, Gidry was over the safeties for sure. He was with them every day, every time. Mm -hmm. The few times <laughs> that we that when we went indoors and stuff, we'd see him yeah. with with the safeties. So and outdoors. Um, so yeah, so they're you know with Merritt and him now uh, with Matt Merritt, you know who we talked about last time at a use at a USF coaching the running backs now. Uh, now they're it looks like they've got a full full staff and uh, they're yeah. ready to go. Pretty drama drama free off season for the most part for the Hurricanes at least uh, coaching wise. Yeah. You know, so always some drama in the Correct. portal and all that kind of stuff, but. Um, yeah, they, they get their coaching staff together just in the nick of time. Um, so we'll we'll get a, our first chance to hopefully get our first chance to see, um, you know, a, a new look Hurricanes, but a team that won't look too, too different um, once uh, spring practice gets started uh, in about 10 days. Yep, we're uh, all looking forward to it. We haven't talked to Mario in a long time. I know it's been time. a while. I feel like it's it's been like quiet, but I think um you know it's 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 been quiet and it hasn't been like I don't know. I don't feel like we're missing a lot with it being like there's not there hasn't been a big story that I feel like the pressing need to like talk to Mario Cristobal about something. I mean, obviously we would love to. They that you know Cam Ward I guess would have been the one like oh, yeah. news, but um you know there hasn't been a. Yeah hasn't been like too much drama too much no scandal or anything like that no uh no really not, like, not that we know of yet right no no like catastrophic portal stuff happening so um you know i think it, after how hectic last off season was M miami will definitely take this one um quickly um we should talk i, I want to wrap up with baseball but i guess while we're on football um news uh -huh. I, I know a lot of people are into the uh ea sports college football game i don't know actually know what they're calling it, it was ncaa football for a long time kind of announced some of their plans um have been kind of like steadily releasing details but uh, i think it was today or maybe it was yesterday um okay. kind of the details about what it's going to mean for the players in this nil era uh six hundred dollars per player I think they said up to 85 players per, per team, I presumably like the scholarship Which is guys. the scholarship. Yes. Yeah, those are scholarship um, guys. And uh, everyone gets a free copy of the game, which I, uh, as a former uh, college student, not that long, <laughs> not, not that long ago, um, uh, I know it will be much appreciated. When I lived in college, when I- I love it. My dorm, in my dorm, my RA, my freshman year was the, the uh, university's EA sports rep. He was the guy who like hosted all the tournaments. So we always had, 
uh, free copies of the new game. So uh, I, I had I was sort of kind of like a, a college football player getting free copies of um, Madden <laughs> and NHL. And so I think was gone by then. Um, but um, I'm sure the Miami it'll be it'll be fun to ask some of these guys about it um, in a couple of weeks because I'm sure they're they're going to be excited about it. Yeah, it will be. And, uh, you know, they, uh, wh- I, I read, you know, a story in, on three, uh, the recruiting site that said, I think, I think they said 11, $6 million, if I have it right, spread over. Um, well, if it's $600 per player, yeah, times 85. Uh, well, over every yeah, fifty-one thousand a team times how many teams are there in Division One now? One hundred thirty. They, they said eleven thousand players, and and eleven thousand players and uh, six million dollars. Yeah, like it'd be it, it'd be rough between like six and six and a half million dollars is what it would be to pay about six hundred dollars a player across every team in the country. Um, it's kind of cool. I, I still yeah. think they're most excited about getting the free game. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. I mean, it's got to be. I know, like, I mean, you see NFL guys, they get ex- like, they get excited about their rate. The ratings come out and all that. Um, so the, it'll be a like a fun little topic of conversation. I think. It will. The season. It, I don't. I don't think anybody from the hurricane. Well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I don't know. It, I don't know who. Yeah, it'll be interesting because it'll be. You know, the, it used to always be those games because they did not have the players in it back before the NIL. They could not, they had like fake players basically. Um, and so the, the like cover, the guy on the cover was always a guy who had just graduated. Um, and like the, the high, you know, the intro video would always be former players. Um, and so, you know, like normally if this was 10 years ago, the cover next year would probably be, um, you know, Jaden Daniels or, or Caleb Williams. Um, now it could be Jalen Milrow or like, so like you're saying there, Cam Ward is the one guy who maybe he'll get like a little bit of a, a spot. I don't expect him to be on the cover or anything, but you know, maybe a little bit more of a prominent placement in some of the materials around the game. Cause you know, they're going to want to have a kind of a, I guess they're going to want to have a, a bunch of players to kind of be like ambassadors for the game. Right. And like, do promos for it and all that kind of stuff being a commercial. So, um, oh, definitely. We'll uh, yeah. And it's coming out in the summer. Yeah. It comes out. So uh, it's, it's, I, I guess, before the season. Sports college football 25. Yeah. So we've got, so, you know, season. in, Susan, I, I, I'm going to assume you've not played a lot of uh, Madden or NBA 2K in your <laughs> life, but, um, you know, in, in a lot of these games, they like will do, um, They'll have like media member. They'll have like a fake Twitter feed on the side, and it'll be like real media. Like in Madden, it'll be like Adam Schefter will like have a fake tweet about whatever just happened in your game. Oh, that's um, really funny. So I think, right, need, happened. I think they need to get you <laughs> as one of the uh, talking head personalities there. That would be funny. Yeah, that would be really fun, actually. Um. Okay. Uh. Let's that's wrap cool. up. With, let's wrap up with some quick baseball talk. Just because the season got started. Uh, you were there. What? What? You were at one of the games over the weekend, right? Yeah, uh, I went. Well, I was at last week. I was at. Um, you know, they had won three in a row. Yep. And the first one was a walk off. Um, uh, after they were, they were up like five nothing or whatever, and then five one, and then the other team came back. New Jersey Institute of Technology. Yeah, it. That <laughs> that great uh, sports sports university anyway the highlanders uh, i learned this weekend the, yeah the highlanders <laughs> highlanders anyway uh you have got a walk-off hit and won that then they won the other two for so they were three and oh then i went to sunday's game and of course it rained it was yep. a rain um and th- so then i went to uh this past sunday's game uh, when they put, uh, excuse me, when Wednesday. yesterday, yeah, midweek, game. yesterday, Wednesday, when they played uh, UCF, and uh, it was not, it was not great. I mean, they lost, UM lost 4 3. They were ahead 3 1. Uh, UCF came back. Um, and then Miami had a chance in the last inning. They had runners on the corner, and Daniel Kube was up. 
and Daniel Covey, a freshman, had a like fabulous first weekend and, and came into the came into the UCF game hitting uh, six ninety two. Um, you let's see, scored seven runs, nine hits, two doubles, seven RBI, two home runs, kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. he's been very highly touted yeah he, he and the, then he got up with guys on the corner uh and won out and uh yesterday um was down for four three he hit into a double play uh, ucf made a really nice play and uh they could have choked and they didn't a lot of wind that was you know the wind was holding balls up but um uh, i don't know i don't I'm not really sure. That was the that was the first game I I, I saw the other one on other ones on TV. Mm -hmm. That was the first one I was there actually there for. Um, you know, we'll we'll have to see. It's it's a yeah. Long it, it does feel like a little bit like um, you know they don't have like the same level of like top end stars. It doesn't seem like in the last couple of years. Obviously, a new coach. Um, it feels like the first time in a couple of years, maybe expectations are a little tempered. Um, but yeah, that could be a good thing for a first year coach because I'm sure this team yeah. will still end up being good. They're still as, you know, I agree. as talented as anyone in the ACC. I'm sure. So um, yeah, well, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens. There's there's returning guys and a lot of new guys and uh, JD. He definitely he said he was gonna JD Arteaga, the the new coach. Yep. He said he was going to really emphasize running uh, with his coaches. And they, I love, I love how they're aggressive, David, on the bases, and they're not really screwing up too much. The, the other, I don't know, last year, a couple of years, they would be kind of um, careless, you know, yeah. and kind of like not knowing what was going on in the situation. They seemed pretty good yesterday going, you know, they, they took good chances. So I think they're going to score more. Hopefully they'll score more runs. Yeah. Yeah. They and, could always be a little more balanced, right? It felt like that was always kind of like um, maybe a problem over the last couple of years. It was like, um, you know, it felt like they would have games where they, they're on, they just had enough, nothing on offense. Like you didn't hit a couple of home runs or, you know, um, struggle with running and scoring position if you man maybe manufacture a little bit more it can't hurt i guess but well yeah and he's say. bunting sometimes i like i yeah i'm excited to watch jd yeah manage. he really is he really is chill he really is he was great afterwards and uh you know talking in the media so we'll see what happens i you know if they if they can get the pitching they'll be okay i think yeah. they're gonna be okay yeah, that's the key. Uh, and I'll say his milkshake sounds pretty good, too. <laughs> yeah, apparently that was the one uh, his son Ari used to order. Oh, that really? Was flavor that wasn't on the menu, but he'd make it up. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was the backstory behind that. Nice. The um, white milkshake. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, they, and David, next week, not this weekend. Yes, I was going to say. From this weekend, they're playing the Gators. Yeah, so maybe after that series, we'll check back in on oh, baseball. We'll, know a, lot. And, oh, and we'll yeah. know a lot more. So A lot more. Yes, yeah. we will. So Gators started the season ranked second, like, and then like they always. lost yeah. their first. Feels like, feels like they're in the top five. So They lost their first game, though, and then they dropped a little bit. But, mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, still a big game, still a good bellwether for this team. Oh, always. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we can wrap things up there. Uh, you can follow yeah. Susan on Twitter at S. Miller Degnan. Uh, what do you got going on? Are you you going to any of the games this weekend? Uh, maybe. I, I've, I'm not really sure. Um, trying to figure out what's going on with the uh, with spring. If right. We'll yeah. Hear so. From you again. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, you can follow you can follow me on Twitter at Jimmy Wilson too. Um, I've been uh, I did. Back, Go ahead. I'm I've sorry. I've been back on the Panthers beat a little bit over the last uh, week uh, as baseball started, and, and our colleague Jordan McPherson's gotten uh, spending a lot of quality time up in Jupiter. So, um, yep. they're they're awesome. They this like the kind of quiet. It's not as you know. I feel like the last couple of years it was uh, they were kind of like the well last year obviously it was a weird season where they didn't play well for a lot of it but 
now we're kind of just used to them being really good, the Panthers. But uh, they're the best team in town. They are. Yes, they are. Big um, story by David Wilson. <laughs> today's paper. Yeah. Um, all right. Law, uh, lawyer, lawyer to be still is a sports writer. Yeah. Can't keep you away. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, we'll close things out there. Thanks, as always, for listening. We'll talk to you guys.